attention at all. We kind of got us a full boat going on today, but I'm, it just tickles the far out of me. You know, we talk about any time we can be in the house of the Lord around God's people, you know, we should be thankful. We should be even more thankful when we spend an entire day with our brothers and sisters in Christ. You know what I'm saying? And it's a blessing. We've got, we do have several things going on, and, uh, and of course, everybody, unless you, uh, this is your first time here, even if it is, you already know that uh, several months ago, I asked a young man sitting right back there <clears throat> if he would be my associate pastor. Uh, actually, one of the greatest things I ever felt like I ever done. To grow up with that man and watch, literally been right there through everything with him. 
and he contacted me a couple of days ago. Now, you guys have heard him preach. Y'all know he has his ministry that he does on Facebook and so on and so forth. He contacted me a couple of days ago, and he said, Brother Joe, I want to ask you something. I said, all right. He said, I've got some family members and people that want me to marry them. And he said, can you ordain me to do that? I said, you better believe I can. <clears throat> I got some scripture I want to read. Brother Jackie Dale Townsend, would you just stand up right there where you, right there where you are, please? I want you to listen in the book. You ain't got to turn there, but I want you to listen in the book of John, chapter 15, verse 15. It says, Henceforth I call you not servants, for thy servants know not what the Lord doeth, but I have called you friends. For all these things, and for all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you, that you should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever you shall ask in the, in the name of my Father, he will give it to thee. Amen. Praise God. Over in the book of Titus, the book of Titus chapter 1, verse 5. It says, For this cause left I thee in sight in Crete, that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting, and ordain the elders of every city as I have appointed thee. Listen to this very carefully. If any be blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children, not accused of riot or unruly. For a bishop must be blameless as the steward of God, not self-willed, not soon angry, not given to wine nor a striker, not given to filthy lucre, but a lover of hospitality and a lover of good men, sober, just, holy, and temperate. Sound like a man we know, doesn't it? Amen. Holding fast a faithful word, as he has been taught that he may be able that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. I got one more place I want to read. Just one more. This is in the book of 2 Timothy. In the book of 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove rebuke, exhort with all long, long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned into fables. So I want to make sure you get this. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the full work of an evangelist, make full proof of your ministry. Come down here. You know, the more I talk to people, the more I talk to people and when I read the Word, I've ordained people and I've ordained ministers in churches before. And you know, this young man right here has shown to be an example. When we all voted him in as an associate pastor of this church, he not only has stepped up to do that, but he is branching his own ministry out. And again, that's my lifelong friend, and I love him like my brother. So I'm going to tell you right now, this is a blessing because he called me and he said, I'm going to take on and do the full work. Thank you, Jesus. Right now, my brother, I charge you in the name of Jesus to take on the full work of an evangelist. I do now ordain you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Father. And right now, today, it's at the Fresh Grove Church. You accept this anointing, and I charge you to go out and do the works of an evangelist, the full works, and let nothing stand in your way. Amen. 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 I gotta say something, you know I do. Just one thing, and I'll shut up. I promise. So go on forever. My nieces, or the two that asked me to marry, and the thing that come to my mind when they asked me was this: one of my little nieces a long time ago, she was dating this little boy, had a little boyfriend, but she met their parents. And her, one of the parents said, well, I know your uncle. And her response was, oh, no, because of the way I used to be. And I don't blame her for that because everything I've done, 
But that same beast, that same beast asked me to marry her. You understand what I'm saying? Thank you, Lord. He can completely transform and change your life, not only your life, but the people around your life. And I just thank you for what he's doing. Amen. Amen. Day. You know, that happened again, especially with what Brother Eugene was talking about this morning. I started talking back there, I just about started preaching back there. And I know y'all heard me say this before, and if y'all get hungry, they're supposed to have sandwiches over there. But y'all see there's a whole bunch of them gizmos in there today. He's going to take us all around the place, but I'm going to start out by asking you one quick question. Who can tell me what a disciple is? Anybody? Tell me what a disciple is. Yes, Mary Lou. Is it one that has followed Jesus? Someone that follows Jesus. Because when Jesus called his disciples, what did he do? He said, follow me. That's all he said. Follow me. Brother, y'all be careful. Wish her a happy birthday. I will. God bless y'all. A disciple. A disciple is called of God, and he says, follow me. And there's more to just following him. I can walk behind anybody and still do the nasty mess that I've been doing. There has to be a change when you decide to be a disciple of Christ. And if you're going to follow behind him and you're going to step where he steps, you need to listen when he tells you and do what he's told you to do. Amen? We're going to get a little bit deeper into that here pretty quick. Turn with, you, turn with me, if you would, to the book of Matthew. Book of Matthew, chapter 28. Book of Matthew, chapter 28. Like I said, we're going to have a whole, we're going to have several different verses we're going to get to today. And we're going to go about two different directions with them. That's all right. God knows what he's doing. Book of Matthew, chapter 28. I'm going to start reading at verse 18. It says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach. Underline that word right there. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, which is actually meant to translate as to make <coughs> disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them. Here that word teaching is again. You have to have people willing to learn in order for you to be able to teach somebody. Does that make sense? How many of y'all, just like I did, when I sat in high school, I didn't pay much attention, so some of the classes I had to go back and get retaught. We're going to go over that here in just a little bit, too. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I'm with you always, even until the end of the world. You know, Jesus taught his disciples. Jesus taught his disciples. For three years is all his ministry was, but everything he did through the book of Proverbs, you can read, everything is about teaching his disciples. He had to find people willing to listen and willing to obey and do what he's been telling them to do. So he handpicked the disciples. Just like I read a while ago, he says, you have not chosen me, I have chosen you. Amen? Amen. You have not chosen me, I have chosen you, and I pulled you aside and I picked you out of the whole big bunch because I got something I want you to do. You are my disciple. I want you to go here when I tell you to go. I want you to sit still when I tell you to sit still. <coughs> Amen. A lot of times we find that to be the hardest part. But the thing is, is to be a disciple, we have to understand that there is a teaching that is involved. And the only way that you're going to learn, the only way that you're going to learn is to keep your mouth shut, pay attention, and get rooted in that Bible. <coughs> That's when you're listening to God. Amen. See, y'all are so quiet. Y'all going to get woke up here in just a minute. <laughs> teaching. Teaching. It just keeps going back. Teaching and teaching. The thing is, is I want to ask you a quick question. Bible says, first of all, that Jesus taught as one having authority. Amen. I'm going to ask you, how in the world can you teach anybody if you don't know yourself? You're right. The only way you're going to know yourself is to have a relationship with God, be the disciple yourself that he has called you to be. Because once you accept the fact that you are a disciple of Christ, he's going to have work for you to do. Amen. This is not I'm a disciple of Christ and I'm going to sit here till he hands me something. 
He says right there a while ago, he says, go, 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 go out there, get up out of those seats and go and teach them. That's our job. As disciples of Christ, you want to know why he was teaching them? Because he knew that he was not going to be around forever. Let that sit on you for just a minute. This right here, as loud as it might get, sometimes it may smell a little funny, this right here is what God uses to get his word and his ministry out now. Amen. Amen. Each and every one of us who are born again Christians and call yourself a disciple of Christ, a follower of Christ, you are now God's mouthpiece. Amen. Y'all ain't, y'all, I'm telling you, we're going to get up out of these seats here in a minute. Y'all need to wake up. Is it ringing any kind of bell just yet? That as a disciple, we have things that we need to do. We have things we need to do. The thing is, is we have a hard time trying to teach everybody else when we don't know ourselves. The Bible tells us to study to show thyself approved. How many of you know that a lot of times you get new Christians and they're trying to do, they think they're doing the right thing. They're trying to witness and minister to people and they don't have the foggiest idea what they're talking about. Amen. They have a desire, they have a want to, but they don't have a know-how. Mm -hmm. They're unequipped to do what they want to do. In fact, what they think that they're supposed to be doing is getting quiet and coming to know the Lord on a more personal level. Now, I'm going to tell you real quick. Any of you out here that still call yourself disciples, that call yourself Christians, if you find yourself stuttering and stammering when God puts somebody in front of you, best thing you can do at that point in time is just hush. Because he's not speaking through you then. You're trying to go on what you may have heard the preacher say at one time, or you're trying to quote scripture that you read on Facebook that morning, and I'm going to tell you more times than not, I have witnessed to people, and they'll look at me and they say, well, I've had preachers talk to me before, and they didn't have any idea what they was talking about. I said, well, you're talking to one now that does. And you want to know why? I don't give them my opinion. Let that sit right on top of you right now. I do not give them my opinion. I tell them what the Word of God says. We're going to get into that here too. Tell them what the Word of God says because more times than not, without knowing what you're talking about fully, your heart may be feeling it. You may desire to do it, but more times than not, you're going to do a lot more harm than you are good. You're going to do a lot more harm than you are good. Book of Hebrews book of Hebrews says, in uh, Hebrews 5, verse 12, it says, For there was a time that you ought to be teachers. You have need to let one teach you again, which is the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. Amen. Amen. Understand your spiritual age group, people. I don't care if you've been sitting in this church ever since the doors opened up or if this is your first day in here. You need to understand how God sees you. He needs to, you need to understand if he knows that he can trust you with something. You need to understand who you are in the eyes of God. And don't be ashamed when he tells you the truth. He's going to tell you the truth, and I guarantee you 90% of us is going to have a lot of stuff we need to work on. Because we ain't nearly as high up as what we think we are. I told a lady yesterday, I said, you know, I said, even the best Christian people who do everything right, who dot every I and cross every T and pray for everybody and do the things you're supposed to do, the Bible says if that person scarcely makes it into heaven, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. somebody that walks that close with God, it says if they scarcely make it into heaven, what hope is that for the lost? Makes you sit back and look at yourself a little different now. I'm talking about, you know, everybody's heard of Billy Graham and all these big evangelists, and you've had people in your own life that you know, good Christian people. I've had my mother tell me that my great-grandmother was one of the most saintly people that she ever met. If people like that scarcely are going to make it in, what about you, disciples? Are you walking high enough up? Are you doing what needs to be done to make sure that even if you scarcely make it in, you're still going to make it? Makes you sit back and reevaluate yourself sometime. If it doesn't, it should be. Glory, glory, glory. 
I'm going to tell you real quick, and the Lord lay this upon my heart. It was a blessing to me. You're going to find out where I'm going here in just a minute. We're going to go over now to the book of Matthew, chapter 7. You're like, my gracious preacher, you're all over the place. Because I want to tell you, chapter 7 of the book of Matthew. And like I told you a while ago, I've had people tell me, preacher, I don't need you to talk to me. I've had other preachers talk to me before and found out that they were just, you know, kind of full of it. Full of themselves more than they were full of God. Amen. Full of what their advice would be other than telling me what God wanted to be. I've had some other preachers and some so-called Christians that talk to me and try to tell me how to live a better life the whole time when I see them the next day on a Tuesday afternoon or whatever come stumbling out of their best friend's wife's house because of really, he's been gone to work or you see him staggering out of a bar. This is the Christian person. Now I'm going to tell you real quick, when you're a disciple of Christ, you walk behind Christ always. Always. I guarantee you God did not lead you into another person's wife's house. I guarantee you God's not going to lead you into a bar. He's not going to lead you into a strip club. He's not going to lead you down all those places. If you're following him and you suddenly see yourself in a situation like that, you got off track. He did not lead you there. You fell out from behind him. You can still sit back in churches. I had a lady tell me yesterday, she said, yeah, I know. Yeah, but I know. Yeah, but I know. Uh -huh. Matthew 7, verse 21 says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works, and then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. People have asked me over the years, they said, Preacher, if you've done it in Jesus' name, it has got to be right. Nope. Mm -mm. Absolutely not. Just because you say you do it in Jesus' name, Jesus may not have told you to do that. You're doing it on your own whim because you feel like you're going to get a warm fuzzy. Somebody's going to look at you and smile and pat you on the back because you brought the Lord to them. Mm -hmm. You're not doing it with the right frame of mind and the right heart. You're doing it because somebody told you to and it wasn't God. I see so many people go out there and they're trying to do it on their own, trying to do it on their own works, and they keep saying, I'm doing this in Jesus' name. God has given me a discerning spirit, and I'm telling you they're not a bit more doing it in Jesus' name. They're doing it in Jill's name or Steve's name or whoever their name happens to be. Yeah. Trying to portray themselves as something that they are not. I'm not trying to knock preachers, I'm not trying to knock televangelists, but I guarantee you, you get up on Sunday morning and turn that TV on, you're going to hear all kind of blasphemy and all kind of garbage, and not very much of it's going to line up with what this book says. Amen. Ooh, y'all sleepy this morning. That's all right. We're going to wake up here a minute. I've heard I've said it up here before. Now I'm about to get around to what I was about to preach on. He's like, you ain't even got started yet? Not really. I want to talk to you this morning. How many of you have heard... I know I said it before. You give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. You teach a man to fish, and you're going to feed him for a lifetime. Mm -hmm. Anybody else ever heard that? Yeah. Amen. If you teach him how to fish, not just look at him and say, okay, go fish. I don't know how to fish. I'm going to teach you, and I'm going to show you how to do it. And how many of you know it takes a lot of equipment if you're going to fish properly. See, y'all need to go ahead and set up the chairs now because I'm going to be right there beside them here in just a minute. you got to have the right equipment in order to be able to fish properly. Matthew 4, verse 18, it says, And Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee and saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he said unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Listen to what it says. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. Go on down to verse 22. Actually, 21. Is, Going from thence, they saw two more brethren, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, a brother, in a, in a ship with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets, and he called to them. And they immediately left the ship and their father and followed him. You understand what that just said? 
Two different instances. When God called his disciples, it said we dropped right on the spot what we were doing. I've had so many people tell me, I've got to get myself right. Then you're not interested in being God's disciple. He's the one that's going to get you right. The one place in the Bible says, let the dead bury the dead. I told you to follow me. Instead of putting up with your own stuff, thinking, well, when I get enough time, Lord, then I'll fall in behind you. It's going to be too late. Amen. Amen. I'm going to have to get louder and come back there with y'all. Y'all get way too comfortable. Give me a bottle of water and start just anointing everybody with that. <laughs> Praise God. We need to understand that immediately. I mentioned a while ago, I said, you know, in order to, in order to go fishing, in order to be a good fisherman, you have to be equipped. You have to be equipped with the right stuff that you need. Amen? Amen. You can't just go out with whatever that you think and, you know, just find you an old stick. And I know back in, in the day, so to speak, you know, you could take an old willow branch and you could tie a string to it or whatever that you need to. But how many of you know it takes certain equipment? I'm going to start out by telling you I was cleaning out my garage yesterday and I got four different rod and reels in my garage. Four of them. Want to know why? Come on, take this. Things. I got one that's real light. Real light. And I can catch a little shad and whatever else I need to with it. All the way up to my catfish pole, which it looks like it's about 20 feet long, and it's about that big around, and it ain't going to break for nothing. So in case I get a hold of that big one. Thank you. Just let this sit in there for just a minute. I will make you fishers of men. We, in fact, are the fishing pole. We are. We are the fishing pole. You know, Brother Gene was talking about prayer in here this morning. We are the fishing pole, first and foremost. How many of you know, without, if you don't put any line on that thing, you're just a stick. <laughs> you ain't useful for nothing if you don't put some kind of string or line on that. That's what I want to get to right now. Because, bless God, we hit all over it this morning. How many of you know that your direct line is prayer to God? Yeah. Prayer is the line that you put on yourself. That's what you need in order to start getting things done. God is your direct line, and the only way to put string on you is to go ahead and say, Lord, here am I. I want you to get me lined out and pray. Pray continuously. That was mentioned up here about 15 times this morning, wasn't it? Prayer. Prayer. Pray without ceasing. That's where our strength comes from. How many of you know that one of my poles has got about a five-pound test line on it? Anything much higher than that, it's going to snap. Mm -hmm. <laughs> one of them's got about a 15-pound test line. Much higher than that, it's going to snap. Huh. Some of y'all still ain't getting it yet, but you will here in just a minute. How many of you know you have to have the right test line in order to accomplish what he's setting you out to do. You can't go in there with a minnow bucket expecting to catch Moby Dick. Mm -hmm. You have to have the right equipment when you're going in to battle with this. You understand what I'm saying? You can start out with the same old cane pole and one old shoelace tied to it that your granddaddy gave you back in the day and you ain't going to catch nothing with that now no more than you did then. You know, I've got three different tackle boxes sitting in my garage. And I open them dudes up, and I've got any sort of lure that you can possibly think of in your life. I've got different color worms. I've got different color bobbers. I've got different color spinner baits. I've got all these different kind of things. Huh. Want to know why? All these different things, I'm going to tell you, you can, you can put a worm on a hook and throw it out there. And a worm itself will catch a fish. Mm -hmm. But a worm will only catch one kind of fish. Those that just kind of hover and lay around the bottom. <laughs> I've got two or three, I said three, tackle boxes full of all different kind of lures and baits and this and that and the other because I like to catch a lot of different fish. I'm not satisfied with just going out here and talking to one person or one kind of person. God is going to equip me to put people in front of me that I can talk to and I can use this entire tackle box to accomplish what it is he wants me to do. I have to know how to use the Lord. You understand what I'm saying? I have to know how to bait the hook. I have to know where to put it. Amen. Glory, glory, glory. Told y'all y'all gonna wake up here in a minute. Told y'all gonna come out there and get next to you. 
You know, the thing is, let's go back to what I was talking about, that our line, our line is our prayer life to God. Amen? I'm going to go back around. What word did I ask you guys to underline a while ago? Anybody Teach. tell me what it is? Teach. 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 Uh -huh. Praise God. Somebody wasn't asleep. <laughs> to teach. I'm not going to ask you to go over there with Luke chapter 1. Luke 11 chapter 1. Or verse 1. Excuse me. The disciples looked at Jesus because they had watched him. Pay attention to what I'm saying. They had watched him over by himself praying. They had witnessed him over by himself praying. They meditated. They watched him. They just seen out there and watched what he did. How many of you know that you, everybody else is watching exactly what you do? Yep. And it says when he got done praying, it says the disciples came to him and didn't say, Jesus, tell us to pray. The Bible says that they looked at him and said, Jesus, teach us to pray. Teach us. We don't understand how to do it unless you teach us. Amen. You understand what I'm talking about? We have got to pay attention when God is teaching us something. We have to understand what he's teaching us. And if we don't understand it, just like when you were in high school or you were in grade school, raise your hand, ask him a question. It was mentioned up here in our prayer life this morning. You have not because you ask not. If you don't have an understanding, it's because you've not asked God to give it to you. Yeah. Praise God. If you believe God's going to hear and answer your prayer, then just pray to him and say, Lord, I don't understand a lick about what you just said. And I promise you, as his child, he is going to break it down however he has to so you will understand it. As long as you are willing to try to go that extra mile to understand it. He'll put somebody in your path, something to happen, and all of a sudden a little light bulb is going to click on above you and you're going to say, hey, maybe three days down the road. Why I get that now? Huh? Now I understand. How many of y'all ever had that happen? Mm -hmm. Been out in the field working, you've been pondering and praying over something all week, and it seems like it's just kind of hitting against the wall, then all of a sudden when you ain't even thinking about it whatsoever, uh -huh. right, uh -huh. right there. Amen. And then you go, oh, wait a minute. Yeah. And it's just as clear as a bell, isn't it? Yeah. You want to know why? Because your mind is in tune with him. Mm -hmm. You're listening to him. You don't have to get up here and <laughs> preach all the time. You don't have to sing all the time. But the Bible says, blessed is a man whose heart or whose mind is set upon the Lord. You have to have this lined out right. And if this mind right here is upon him, I guarantee you he's going to talk and you're going to hear him. And when he talks to you and tells you to do something, that's exactly what you're going to do if you are a disciple of Christ. Praise God. Whew, let's keep going on now through here. See, the prayer is where our strength comes from. I'm going to ask you, I want you to sit back and think about how strong is your line this morning. You get a big enough fish on it, it's going to break. More times than not, I'd say yeah. Now we have a pole and we have a line. We done talked about the bait. But the thing is, you have to learn how to use each and every one of them. And the only way to do that is to try them. Amen? Don't keep relying on old faithful putting the worm on the hook because you're going to end up being like those other people that I told you about. They're going to say, well, I had an old dry preacher, and then I found out he didn't know what he was talking about. How many of you know that Paul said, when I talked to the Greeks, I spoke as a Greek. When I spoke to the Jews, I spoke as a Jew. You have to know what base it is that you're talking to. Mm -hmm. I can talk to Sister Darlene in a way that she will understand what I'm talking about. I may go talk to somebody else who may not be a born-again Christian, and I have to break it down to where I can help them to understand. I'm not going to do a dime's bit of good, and I'm telling you, I can do it. I can get up here, and I'm not patting my own back, and I can preach all the these and thous that I can possibly come up with, and it may sound pretty and flattering, may look good on that video, but I'm going to have people sit back looking at me like a bump on a pickle because y'all ain't going to get nothing out of what I just said. It's easy to preach and teach and talk above somebody else's head and want people to make you think that you're something bigger than what you are, but you're not helping anybody. Praise God. You need to understand how people understand. I told them, I know uh, Sister Nancy told me, she said, I like the way you preach. She said, you put it on a level that helps me understand. And I said, sis, when I was called to preach, that's what I asked God for. I said, Lord, help me to preach to people with the same capacity that I can understand. And now, as most of y'all know, I'm a pretty simple fellow. So if y'all can't get it the way I'm throwing it, I ain't saying y'all, don't get me wrong. 
Y'all don't talk about that, man, anyway. But praise God. We have to understand who it is that we're talking to. We have to understand what it is that we're dealing with. Now comes the real good part. I want to tell you real quick, now that we found out, now that we found out that we've got, we've got the rod, which is us, we've got the line, which is Jesus in our prayer life, we got some good high tensile strength right there because if you're prayed up, ain't nothing going to break that line. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> ain't nothing going to break that line. <laughs> Next, now we've already figured out, now we got a whole bunch of different bait. Right? we got a whole bunch of different bait. Turn over to the book of Colossians. You're like, gracious, preacher, you are all over the place. <laughs> book of Colossians chapter 4. I want you to pay real, real close attention to this. Starting verse 2, it says, Continue in prayer. Continue in prayer. There's that line again, isn't it? And watching the same with thanksgiving, with all praying. There's a line again, isn't it? Also for us that God would open to us a door of utterance. Listen to this is what it's saying. A door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ for which I am also in bond. That I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. Listen to this, verse 5. Walk in. We walk in wisdom towards them that are without redeeming the time. It says walk with them. Walk towards them. How many of you know we can all sit in here with a fishing pole and put the best lure on it? We can all sit down here in the middle of the floor and throw it out here on the carpet and hope something bites. How many of you know it says walk towards them that are without? In order to be a good fisherman, you've got to go where the fish are. Amen. 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 That's the reason the Bible says to go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in. It just said, walk towards them that are without. You understand what that means? You may have everything in line. I've got my fishing pole. I've got good line on it. I've got a good bait on it. But if you ain't taking it to work, you might as well lay it up in your garage just like my regular fishing poles are right now. You have to use it in order to accomplish what God says. Verse 6 says, Let your speech be also with grace, seasoned with salt. Listen very carefully. That you may know how you ought to answer every man. Not just the ones you pick out. That to be seasoned with salt, that you know how to talk to every man. Anybody that God puts in front of you, if you know that you're going to open your mouth, and if you are true to start with God, He will speak through you. Amen. Amen. He will speak what needs to be said to that person. He's going to put that person in front of you. If you have followed him, he's going to say, stop right here. I want you to talk to him. And then all you've got to do is say, yes, Lord, and open your mouth, and he's going to put the words in it for you. Amen. Not yourself. Praise God. See, the thing is, we need to walk towards him. We need to walk towards him. You know, how many of you know the right bait will catch the right fish? Know what I went over bait before. But I want to tell you something. If I catfish, and I like catfish, I took a big old hook on the end of that thing, and I take one of them big old night crawlers about the size of your finger, and just goober him all up on that thing. Right? Either that or a big hunk of that stinking blood bait stuff. Take it on there. Catfish are nasty. They eat anything. And you know, I can go out there and I put a big weight on the end of that string. And I cast it out there. I don't like using one of them bobbers. That makes it float around too much. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's for another subject. <laughs> so I throw that thing out there, and sure enough, that fish will smell that stinking thing, and he's going to scoop it up in his mouth, isn't he? You know, and that's exactly what the different lures and the different baits are designed to do. The problem with a lot of us is we want to take that worm because it's nasty and gooey and ugly, and we'll spray it down with perfume or something because we want to beautify it a little bit. Huh? We want to make it look pretty. We're not satisfied with just what God gave us. I want to put my two cents worth in on it. And you spray that thing down, or you got lotion on your hands, when you put that worm on the hook, you're going to do nothing but repel the fish more than attract them. Because it doesn't smell right to them. You understand what I'm saying now? Something's not going to smell right, and that fish will not touch it because you put yourself into it instead of just doing what God told you to do. Why do you think when you go to talk to some people, you get doors shut in your face because they can read you just like a book. They can see it in your eyes. You're either true or you are not. And I've had people look at me and they say, you know, I knew who you were before you ever opened your mouth. 
Praise God. I'm not patting my own back, but bless God, I really like to hear that. When somebody can just look at me and say, I know something's different about you. The way you carry yourself, the way you walk, what I see you do by the example that you live, you don't have to open your mouth. I knew it before, I ever, knew, before you ever said a word. Praise God. Again, I'm not tooting my own whistle, but I want to tell you, you let somebody tell you that, tell me it don't bless you. Amen. Mm -hmm. Bless God when you can live your life so much that enough God shows in you and the actions and everything else that you do that God that people can see God in you. Bless God, that just well, you have no idea how much that bubble be up. It's a blessing when somebody tells you that. And God puts people in your life for that purpose to encourage you that way. How many of you know that made me step a little bit higher? Made me throw my shoulders back a little bit more. Well, bless God, if this person's seen it, I'm gonna make sure other people see it. Mm, to live my life more Christ-like, to be a better disciple, to be a better disciple. How many of you know, we don't got all, we don't got debate, but you know what debate goes on, don't you? <laughs> what do you got to put debate on? Hook. A hook. <laughs> I'm going to tell you where the hook comes from. The Holy Spirit is the hook. There you go. The Holy Ghost is the hook. You can have all this stuff, and if you don't have a hook, you tie the worm on the end of the string if you want to, and you still won't catch nothing. You'll just be feeding fish on nasty worms. Amen? The hook. You're like, preacher, I'm just telling you this is honest truth. You know, Jesus said, Jesus said, he said that you can't even come to the Father but by me. You can't come unless the Holy Ghost leads you. I'm going to tell you real quick. I got some verses. I got another verse here I'm going to read to you real quick. You know, it's not by the pretty words, your charm, or just how beautiful that you think you are that's going to win anybody to God. It's not about what you do. It's just being obedient to God. Because when you speak and let the Word speak and let God speak through you, then the hook is going to get set. Brother Jackie Dale told me and told us back there a while ago, he said some of the very same people that doubted me, some of the very same people that told me I wasn't going to amount to this and I wasn't going to do that, he said, bless God, they're the very ones that's contacting me now saying, would you marry us? Amen. You understand what kind of change can take place when you get the right equipment and you use the right equipment and you utilize it the way God has told you to use it? Do you see the change it can make in people's lives? Because people are going to see a noticeable change in you. And they're going to want what you got. Glory to God. Y'all still ain't awake yet. We may have to go in and preach a little bit a couple more times. Turn with me, if you would, over to the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 14. Listen to me real carefully on this. This is about the scripture. It says, but continue thou in all things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. See how we was talking about teaching a while ago. Now we're talking about the fact if you have learned it or not. Amen? Amen. 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 I'm going to keep saying it to y'all do. Amen? Amen. There we go. Now y'all with me. Verse 15 says, And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise into salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. This is what I want you to pay close attention to. Verse 16. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Do you understand what that just said? Is all given by God. All given by God. And that right there is where the hook comes from. When you present the word of God, it didn't say that the, it didn't say that you will be doing the reproof. The Spirit will do the reproofing, not you. The Spirit will do the correcting, not you. The Spirit will do the instructing, not you. It is the Spirit of God that is the hook. It is the Holy Ghost of God. You've got nothing to do with it, but you manage to take it and put it in front of somebody. Amen? Amen. I used to go snag fishing down at Kentucky Dam. And, you know, you could throw out there and drag that big treble hook back across. And every so mm -hmm. often you might hook into one of them spoonbill catfish. Mm -hmm. How many of you know you can go out here to whatever lake and you can do the same thing? Throw it out there and just hope that you hang on to something. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if you use equipment right, you can sit back on the bank in one of them big umbrella chairs with glasses of sweet tea <laughs> and just throw it out there and let it do what it's supposed mm -hmm. to do. 
You don't have to work so hard to try to catch something. All you got to do is let the equipment work for you. Amen. When you use the equipment properly, it will bring forth the increase. He already said he would do that. You're sitting in them right now. We had a double portion give to us about two weeks ago. We started out sitting on the very pews that were just in here. As a matter of fact, I found out, y'all told me that they had them sitting out down there at Caesar mm -hmm. when they'd done that vault thing over this weekend. Mm -hmm. Amen? The very pews are still being used. But just these seats right here, we went for 125. Then we thought we was going to get 150. And then he turned around. I know I've done the math wrong, but y'all caught me on that. But we walked out of there with 250 of those chairs. You understand? When you're doing things right, this congregation in this church are doing things right. That's the reason things are manifesting themselves in this congregation, inside this church. That's the reason God is blessing this church, not with just a comfortable seat you can sit in, but newer people coming in wanting to hear the Word of God. What you guys got going on up on that hill, bless God, I like it. I want to know what you got going on. Tell me. Yes, amen. Then it's our job to tell them. Praise God. But it's our job to let the Spirit do it, to let the Word do it. You know, again, I've told, I've told you all many times, I can give you my opinion. I can say so many different things, but that's not going to do what needs to be done. That's not going to take care of it because you ain't going to do nothing but just get yourself in the way. When you're going to get yourself in God's way, first of all, He's going to get you out of the way. I've seen him do it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Many times I got too fast, too big for my spiritual britches. You remember I talked a while ago about you need to know who you are in Christ. Mm -hmm. You need to know your own spiritual age. Huh. I really thought I was something else. And I know he asked us not to say anything, Brother Jackie Dale. Yes, Brother Jackie Dale sitting right back there. <laughs> big tall Brother Jackie Dale got up here and sang a song last Sunday night. Everybody go, huh? Thank you for good, too. Says, I thought of myself as a mighty big man, but I can't even walk without you holding my hand. Many times we just snatch away from him. All right, Lord, you taught me enough. I got this. No, you do not. You have to be forever learning. Teach me to fish. You know, I like to watch them shows on TV. They got these big bass fishing tournaments and whatnot. 52 rod reels laying everywhere. A gazillion different kind of lures laying around everywhere. And they know how to use each and every one of them. They know exactly where to go to get that fish. And they know exactly what lure to put on. You want to know why? Because they've been doing it for a while. Does that make sense? They've proved out everything that's sitting on their boat. They know how to operate each and every one of them. They know what size line is on this one. They know what kind of fish is in there, so they know what kind of lure they need to use. They don't try to put something else on there because they think it looks pretty. They use what he's got. You need to use what God has given you, and you need to seek him out more and more because as long as you're down here still breathing air, he's still teaching you, still teaching you. I don't care if you're 6 or you're 65 or 85. He is still teaching you. Right. Are you still learning, though? Amen. People drop your heads when you go to say that. Are you still learning? Are you still desiring to be fed of God? Or have you slipped back to wanting the milk again? More times than not, y'all have heard me say it before, the Bible talks about being at ease in Zion. I've been doing this for so long. I did my part. It's somebody else's turn. Then you are believing a lie from the devil because it's still your turn. Amen. It's going to still be your turn until he either comes and gets us or we throw dirt in your face. It's just that easy way to put it. This is a never-ending job to serve the Lord. Just like I said a while ago, if the true saints of God scarcely make it in, where does that put you and you and you and me and everybody else? How close are you going to get before the door shuts? Are you going to make it? Well, I know what the Bible says. Do you? There's a lot of people that knows what the Bible says. The devil knows what the Bible says. He don't live it, 
but he knows exactly what it says. We got a lot of people that's been sitting in church thinking they've been Christians for years and years and years, and I'm not doubting anybody. That's your own relationship with God, not mine. But my thing is, is I hate to sit back and think that at some point in time you've been doing this for years and there's not been any kind of change, no more growth, no nothing that's taking place in your life. That's about the time you need to start opening the tackle box and figure out if I've just been doing this wrong. Not everybody that cries, Lord, Lord. That's sad. you got people sitting in chairs and pews and whatever all their life and never get it. They don't ever strive to do anything different. They don't strive to try to do anything else. They get so arrogant thinking that they've already learned enough that I know what everything that's in that book. Y'all heard me say I've been preaching for 26 years. A lot of this I've preached over time and time again. But I'm going to tell you every time, just like when I was getting this together, he still reveals more and more to mm -hmm. me every time I read it. You can go through this Bible and about 90% of it's highlighted. and got stuff written down in the sides of it and this and that and the other because I use it. Amen? But I can still open that Bible up and preach out of some of the same <coughs> scripture and it's going to mean something different. Amen? Amen? Because Amen. it's meant for a different purpose. We need to understand that too. I'm going to read one more verse here and I'm just going to go ahead and let you go. Praise God. In the book of John, chapter 6, verse 44. Remember I told you a while ago, and I'm going to tell you this again. You give a man a fish and you feed him for a day. Teach a man to fish, you're feeding for a lifetime. Verse 44, John 6 says, No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be, shall be all taught of God. Every man therefore that hath heard and hath learned of the Father cometh to me. Read that one more time. Amen. Read that one more time. It just got through saying, Every man therefore that hath heard and has learned. There's more to it than just you hearing the words bounce out of my mouth. There's more to it than that. It says, Blessed is he who has not only been taught, but also has learned. That's the reason tonight we're going to start having a Bible study out here at 6 o'clock. Because we mentioned in here last Sunday night, y'all wasn't here, y'all didn't get a vote on it. Sorry. We're going to do it anyway. Starting night, 6 o'clock, we're going to have Bible study. We're going to start out doing it just on the, on the weeks that we've preached down there at Colonial Terrace. So we're going to do it once a month unless it gets really big and we'll do it a whole lot more. But how many of you know that last Sunday night we even sat back and talked? Brother Jackie Dale, I'm going to tell you real quick, he pulled it on last Sunday night. He hit a whole different level of preaching last Sunday night. What a blessing. And then here we sat in here with what was it, about 10 of us. And we ended up having a small Bible study even sitting in here. Questions and answers. Because you want to know why? I've said it before. I can preach. He can preach. You can listen to any preacher that you want to. You can listen to anybody talk that you want to. But in order to get to know him, in order to understand what that word says, you need to start asking questions. You need to be around Christians as well. That way everybody can help one another. The Bible says iron sharpens iron. I'm going to be here to help you. I want you to be here to help me. I'm not going to have have all the answers, but bless God, you get five or six good Christian people together who know that book, we're going to find out what it says. Amen. Amen. So I encourage you to come out and be with us that way because you know there's always teaching. There's always going to be people being taught, and you're always going to have to learn. And I'm going to fill you in on a little something that a lot of people really don't know. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. The Bible even tells us that when we get to heaven, mm -hmm. there's still going to be teaching. Mm -hmm. Still going to be learning, even after you get there. Mm -hmm. Well, know why? Because you're not able to conceive it all down here. Mm. Still going to be teaching in those that require being taught. I told you I'm going to hush. I'm going to go ahead and close this down this morning. I know I bounced all over the place, but I hope y'all understood exactly what I was talking about. In order for us to be the disciples that God has called us to be, He's given us the equipment that we need. To do the job required to do, we have to be willing to use it. We have to know how to use it. We have to know where to go get it. And then we have to use it. So I want to ask you, are you fully equipped to be a disciple of God? Are you equipped and are you using what God's given you? Or are you just that Christian stick that's just laying up against the pew? 
Boy, it's quiet. It's real quiet. Preacher, you just call me a Christian stick? No, I asked you if you would. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm one of them big rod and reels, and I got all kind of tests lying on me. Because I pray all the time. It's going to take a whole bunch or a great big something or another. It ain't going to break my mind. Amen? And I got every lure imaginable. I've talked to anybody from black, white, green, yellow, orange, if they were that, happen to be that color. From some out there that strung out on dope so bad. I've talked to people that are homosexual. I've talked to any number amount of people that God put in front of me. And I guarantee you, when I opened my mouth, he spoke through me to the point that they understood what I was telling them. I have seen them get converted. I've been on the side of the road with my sleeve with shirt on, reach across my motorcycle and lay hands on somebody and pray for them and watch them get saved right on the side of the road. You want to know why? Because he used the lure, I used the lure that he gave me. It it may have been that motorcycle, so be it. But he's going to use whatever instrument he has to to put you in a place where you need to be in order to catch what he wants you to catch. You just have to be receptive to him. Yes. Amen. amen. Praise God. Everybody stand to your feet. I know y'all just got too comfortable. Praise God. Praise God. See, y'all all kind of stretching now. Glory, glory, glory. All right, just like we do, I want everybody to bow your head. I don't want nobody looking around. Nobody looking around at all. I want you to bow your head, and right there where you stand, I want you to just start looking at yourself. Am I the disciple that God has called me to be? Am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing as a follower, as a follower, as a follower of God? Am I just going through the motions? Am I just trying to fake it enough so people will believe it? Or am I truly the Christian person that God wants me to be? I guarantee you each and every one of us in here can have a closer walk with him. Each and every one of us in here is not utilizing what God has given you to use. Because we've got at ease being able to use and be comfortable with where we're at, not striving to do more. I want you to look at yourselves and pray this morning, right there where you stand. Lord God, I want you to, I want you to search me. If there be something inside of me, Lord, that doesn't line up with you, if I'm not as close to you as what I need to be, show me. I'm not going to try to embarrass you and ask you to step out. If you want to come to the altar and pray, come down here. I'll pray with you. But I ask you just to look at yourself this morning. And if God is already speaking to your heart, and God sometimes throughout this sermon, he may have spoke to you and he said, you know, I know what. I know where I need to be. I know where I used to be. And I'm not there anymore. If you want to get back with God, if you want to have that closer walk with God, just raise your hand. I ain't going to ask you to come out. Praise God. I'll pray for you. Glory to God. Amen. Praise God. See, God knows. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank God. Thank God. See, we can't praise God right there in there. Glory, 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 glory. Each and every one of us needs to have a closer walk with him. And by the raising of hands that's in here this morning, it just blesses my heart because we're all, we know that we need a closer walk with him. And we desire to have that closer walk with him. What a blessing it is. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Glory, glory, glory. Father God, right now in Jesus' name, love you, Master Lord, I lift up these individuals, Father God, that raised their hand in here this morning. Love you, Master, I know that there's a need in each and every one of our lives. And Father, I do also know that there's probably more in here that for whatever reason they just held back. But Lord, for these